Hi everyone, my name is Belana Wynn and welcome to the Owl House and welcome to Belana.com. So today in the series Talking Trauma, we're talking about minding your mind. What in the world do I mean by that? Well, if you have had a traumatic childhood or traumatic adulthood, if you've experienced trauma, whether it be illness, accident, something that was acted upon you, your mind focuses on the trauma. It focuses on the whys, the what fors, replaying sometimes the trauma in your mind. And what can happen is your mind will loop and loop and loop the story and just as you start to kind of come to some knowing and some peace, it reloops into another thought. And that's the brilliance of the mind. The mind is here to be this dynamic supercomputer, right? That's processing. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery. But if we dropped into what I call a second mind, and a lot of the metaphysical community refer to the, the second mind is the heart. And if the heart really led your day, you might find that you have a lot of stillness there versus the mind here, the brain, that is processing data, 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 right? You may see something on television that triggers you and you go back to when you were about four years old and you wonder why you're sitting there watching a movie thinking about something that happened when you were that age. So the mind is, this, again, this brilliant supercomputer that we have to mind. We have to mind the mind, because otherwise the mind will make you its bitch. And it's like, why, right? Why do we want to allow that? So if every thought creates an experience, and every thought validates, perhaps, how you feel about yourself, you can imagine if your mind is running free on old data, you don't get the benefit of who you are today. Surviving, thriving, abundant, working towards the future. You see, the mind is tricky that way. It likes to keep you in uh, questioning. But on the flip side of that, the brilliance of the mind, if it's put to work, is to figure out why do you feel the way you do and what can you do about it. How can you train this beautiful tool so that you're its master? So that is where we're going as we start to step into what filter am I playing in my mind today as I go out and go to work or as I go to meet girlfriends or boyfriends, what have you. What filter am I operating out of? Is it the I'm not enough filter? Is it I'm kind of angry type of filter? What filter are you wearing today? And so I'm going to ask you to reach in almost kind of psychically into the mind. And I want you to shift the frequency a couple of do little dial marks to the positivity meter. Just shift it. And in doing so, what happens is the heart kicks in. And the heart frequency kicks in so that it starts to allow the mind to relax, and you can trust this beautiful heart. Your heart is always going to lead the way in something that's completely different than a mind that is working out of old data. The heart is curious. The heart is hopeful. The heart is willing to explore. The heart is love. And the heart can be a lot of other emotions. But for the most part, if we looked at the heart as a tool that regulates our busy mind. You can bring yourself back to a regulation of what I call five and just be neutral in this space. Take a look at what's going on. Ah, okay, I got that filter on. I'm judgmental today. Let me just back that out a bit and try to be more allowing. And in doing so, what happens is it shifts your way of being for the day and it shifts your frequency so you're attracting different experiences in your life. So, minding your mind is a lifelong process for those that have survived trauma. And I can tell you it's, it's a wonderful process of always knowing and coming to know yourself more deeply 
and it's well worth the work that it takes. Minding your mind, there you go. I'm Valana from Valana.com. Thanks for listening, and check out the website. <laughs>